I think initially going into this going into this uh, the sugarcane aphid thing that we run into in 2014 most people just logically assumed it would probably be similar from a damage level to what they've experienced with other crops and other aphids but quickly we realized that wasn't the case. I think now that we have an appreciation for the damage potential and the fact that we know we can control it, it just takes timely scouting and management, I think we can manage it and I think our growers are, are up for the challenge. We had a lot of growers that were afraid to plant sorghum because they were afraid of the aphid and, and it from what I can gauge so far uh, this year and, and through the winter was that uh, a lot of these farms are ready to come back. They've seen that we can manage the aphid and they're, they're looking forward to planting some sort in this next year. I think the biggest thing is none of them been out in their fields checking. They, they, they waited till things got really bad and then they thought, oh my gosh, I gotta do something. Once they got out in the field and they were seeing those small colonies forming on those lower leaves, that was the aha moment. And they were saying, wow, uh, I didn't realize this is how they started out. I, I, my thought is that a lot of them just figured that these things just blew up and they, they just flew in and they were already at these thousand aphids per leaf. But, once they got out there and started looking and they saw those small colonies and they figured out real quick this is not a hard thing to do and uh, that gave them some confidence and I think that's important. There's a lot of similarities among all the thresholds that you're hearing uh, from different states. There may be some, some slight differences. Once you think you're hitting about 20 or 25 percent of the leaves that you're checking have these small colonies then that, that might trigger an, an application of an insecticide, particularly at that, that sensitive period in the plant development. We had one option in, in 14 and that was transformal sufloxiflor. Going into this past year, 2015, of course Bayer got the registration for Zavanto and we were able to also obtain the 18 again for transform. And that's super important for a pest like aphids. Aphids have a, a history, a well-known history because of very short generation time of, of resistance. Moving forward with this pest, it's going to be very important to have multiple modes of action or multiple products available to manage this pest. Whether that's sorghum midge or some kind of a headworm complex, sometimes we have to treat other pests. And sorghum midge is probably one of the big ones. I think traditionally it can be so devastating that, that a lot of our growers just, they treat it for it automatically. The problem with that is a pyrethroid, which is what's commonly used for midge control, is like pouring gasoline on a fire for this aphid. This aphid is, is unlike a lot of other pests. This is one of those pests that can affect the crop from the time it emerges out of the soil to when you pull the combine in the field. So it's gonna take a full season long approach to management and it also is, it, takes a full integrated approach. And there's a lot of things we can do to lessen the likelihood of a severe infestation and to manage that infestation if it occurs. And, and some of those are things like planting early. For yield, probably the most critical period is just before boot and during that boot point. And then, and then again at harvest, we, we can't afford to have harvest issues. We can use insecticide seed treatments and some areas that may not help as much as others. We have good evidence that there are some hybrids that offer some sort of resistance or tolerance to the aphid. It's not complete, but they help. And you'll have slower population growth on those hybrids, and you may spray less. You may not need to spray them at all, but uh, it, again, you gotta scout them. It's all about the grower. Without the producer, I mean, I, I have no purpose as an as a agricultural researcher. I'm, I'm here for the growers, and I know uh, sorghum checkoff, they're there for the growers, and we work together. Sorghum has done a good job of addressing the issue. Uh, I mean, this has been a huge undertaking, and it's, there's a lot of projects, and it's not just one or two here or there. It's a tremendous effort, and uh, I think the, the sorghum industry stepped right up, and they did what they had to do. I think it's paying off.